It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. Wednesday evening, March the 14th. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. We're covering crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro this evening. Crude is bearish, but trading inside a range tonight. And that tells me to look for selling opportunities up above the range highs using those failure patterns tomorrow morning. The S&P is also bearish with a flat, almost sideways channel. That tells me also to focus on failures up near the highs for the most reliable selling opportunities on Thursday morning. NASDAQ also bearish. NASDAQ spike in channel. And the slope on the NASDAQ tonight is a huge clue telling me exactly where and how to find the best sells off the highs tomorrow morning. Gold is sideways as well with a triangle pattern, and that tells me to use the two-try rule to sell into the highs and buy the lows tomorrow morning. And the euro is sideways with a big old triangle pattern as well, and that tells me to focus on failures and look for opportunities to fade the breakouts using failure patterns tomorrow morning. Speaking of tomorrow morning, I got a great plan for Thursday's session. We get a bunch of ranges to work with here tonight, and the key component here tonight is the slope. We'll be talking a lot about slope tonight. We see a lot of channels, and a lot of these channels are very flat slopes, so make sure you stay tuned right, to learn more about how we can use slope to adjust our trading strategy for the most reliable opportunities in tomorrow's session. I'm going to put it all together here in just a few moments. Before I do, though, I do want to remind you, if you're on YouTube right now, please don't forget you can find a detailed description of the entire strategy written out in text form on my blog below the video here at sidewaysmarkets.com. If you have any questions about anything covered in this video, please remember to post them in the comment section below the YouTube video. And if you like what you see, Please help support this channel by subscribing and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I post another video. And if you really want to stay in tune with everything we do here at School of Trade, I'll put a link in the description of the YouTube video. Follow that link over here to sidewaysmarkets.com and make sure you join our mailing list. That way you never miss another great video. I'll send you an email every time something new gets posted on our blog. And don't forget, I'm also posting exclusive content throughout the week. You won't find this anywhere else on any of my other channels. Stock Twits, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm always posting charts, links, and updates each week. So grab them on social media in the lower left-hand corner. And speaking of charts, how easy is that? All the charts from tonight's video, you can download them, have them on your computer for tomorrow, right where it says click here to download today's charts. Grab those charts and be ready for tomorrow. And speaking of tomorrow, grab that free pass. Come out and join me as a guest in the trade room. If you're not an advanced member here at School of Trade, I've got a free pass for you in the upper right-hand corner. Don't delay. Once you finish up watching the video tonight, head over to the blog at Sideways Markets, grab that free pass, and join me tomorrow to see how we use the strategy. And of course, if you have any questions on the way, you can always post those questions below the video in the comment section, or you can always use live support on the right-hand side of the website. Let's jump right in. Now that we got that out of the way, tomorrow is Thursday, March the 15th. And of course, tomorrow being the last couple days here now of OPEX, or quad witching, I should say. Every three months, the third month of the year, the third Friday of the month, right? So of course, we got March Right, we got June, we got September, and we have December, right? So March, June, September, and December, these are the big end of the quarters. We are just about ready to wrap up, right, the end of the first quarter, right, the end of March. But the third Friday of March, right, third Friday, first Friday, second Friday, third Friday is the 16th, right? So as I mentioned earlier on in the week, we are coming up on quadruple witching on Friday. Now, that typically means that Thursday and Friday are, are really quite big variables. You know, in my experience of the past 10 some odd years, uh, usually quad witching is pretty good, usually pretty volatile, usually pretty good movement. Today was a glimpse into what might be in store for tomorrow and Friday. We got a lot of ranges, got a lot of real choppy price action that we saw in the trade room this morning. 
had a great day, right? But markets are definitely choppy and sloppy, and this might be because of the end of the first quarter coming right on the corner and because of that quad witching kind of holiday almost coming on Friday. So we don't know enough about it yet, but we do know that sometimes we start seeing some chippiness and some choppiness ahead of the options expiring. Remember, all four asset classes expire on Friday, March 16th. That's why they call it quadruple witching, right? All four asset classes are expiring on Friday. So we are seeing some chop and slop here from today's session. We'll see if that continues into tomorrow's session. If it does continue into tomorrow, right, we have to assume it's all eyes and ears on that Friday quad witching. We should get back to normal, right, into the beginning of next week. But sometimes these quad witchings, sometimes they get a little bit lower volume. They get a little bit cranky, a little bit fussy, and we definitely saw that towards the end of the session today. So lots of ranges to work with, and that might be a kind of a leading indicator of what might be coming for the rest of the week. Now, I don't want to say we, I don't want to say we can't trade the rest of the week because that is definitely not the case. Um, we are, we're going to come out tomorrow. We're going to see how the market looks, see how the price action looks, see how the personality feels. We got a bunch of ranges to work on the chart tonight, so we'll put the plan together, right, and we'll see what we can work with here for tomorrow. As far as the news events go for tomorrow, there's not a lot to work with here tomorrow morning outside of this 8.30 news. We got jobless claims and of course the right the, the Philly Fed number tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern time. We got some numbers here right at 10 o'clock at the housing market and of course you have the tick flows, the Treasury International right capital at 4 o'clock Eastern time. I don't expect those to be that big of a moving event but I do expect though tomorrow morning Early in the session, jobless claims, Philly Fed. Hopefully that will get us moving here well tomorrow morning. Hopefully moving with some consistency. Again, hopefully we'll see some pretty good price action tomorrow, um, even as we go into that quad witching. So again, relatively sloppy and choppy today, but... We'll see how tomorrow looks. If it's the same tomorrow, we will trade cautiously because we are going into that end of the week, which, of course, right is quadruple witching. So we'll talk more about the plan for Friday's quad witching once we get there right tomorrow night. So make sure you stay tuned tomorrow night's newsletter, and we'll put the plan together right for that kind of half holiday or half day right on Friday, March the 16th. In the meantime... We got the news under control for tomorrow. Let's jump in and let's take a look at these charts here. I'm going to go crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro this evening. Starting off with oil, crude is bearish and trading inside a range this evening, telling me to look for settling opportunities up at the highs using buyer failures and the two-try rule tomorrow morning. I can also see this rising support trend line coming up from the lows, and that tells me I got to be careful selling into this support level, either get a good distance away from the level of support or I need to get down back below that support level to make sure I'm not selling into that area of support. Now, something interesting here on the oil, and oh, I want to make sure I mention this here. Um, we are running into rollover time of the month here on oil. As I'm recording this right now, uh, it looks like we are about half and half right now. Uh, obviously, the 418 contract still has all the volume on crude oil right now, right? But just keep an eye on that as we go into the end of the week. We may see rollover on oil before the end of the week. So keep an eye on that. Usually, it's around the 18th of the month, but you know, sometimes, sometimes it rolls early. So watch that rollover. Probably not tomorrow, but possibly on Friday. So keep in mind on that as we go into the end of the week. I'm going to zoom out on this a little bit because I think this will give you a little bit better, uh, better kind of look at this. Here we have a strong move down off the high, and it looks like a relatively sloppy, right, kind of a spike in channel here, right? Spike down and then into a channel, okay? So that's kind of the, that's pretty much the big picture uh, on this oil right now, right? So we're definitely bearish, and we have this channel that we're working our way from the high down to the low, from the low up to the high, from the high down to the low, right? Low back, you get the point, right? So we're rotating back and forth inside, right, of that channel. And so that gives me an idea of where I want to be looking for selling opportunities, right, tomorrow morning. I want to be selling off the high of this channel. Now, with that said, we also can see this kind of a trading range kind of around here. And this range, I opted to put the range a little bit lower, but in all reality, you could draw that range something like this as well. It could be a little bit narrower range there 
as you can see, right, those bounces here. So, you know, I, I wouldn't argue with you if you had the range a little bit higher. I've got my range kind of basing off of those prior lows from yesterday, right, causing that to be range low, this to be range high. And so you could also say there's a bear bias into a trading range. So two main components. Well, let's, 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 let's say three main components. We also have this trend line here coming up off of the low. Now, I don't usually draw my rising support trend lines off of wicks, right? But it really looks nice. You can see a lot of people here are using that trend line right now. Bottom line is that trend line basically tells me I need to either get away from it to sell back down or I need to get below it. To sell back down that's pretty much the what that what that trend line tells me and if you're thinking that trend line may also lead to a reversal you're absolutely right you know rising support trend lines oftentimes do kind of uh, ex uh, kind of exhaust the sellers and allows the buyers to kind of sneak in and 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 take control right you can you can definitely look forward to that tomorrow we're not quite there yet right but we definitely can see that as being a possibility so if you look back in time you can see another example where we had kind of a rise support trend line right you can see how sellers right they like to use that level of resistance for a selling opportunity there right so that's kind of the idea tomorrow right on that on that level of support so three main components one component right is this channel I want to sell off the high of that channel come back down the second component is a bear market down into a trading range anytime we have a trading range we want to focus on failures with the two try rule one try for the buyers two try for the buyers once they fail back down to that low down at that low one try for the sellers two try for the sellers once they fail back up into that trading range right back up into that trading range so as you can see relatively simple for a range and then again you've got this rising support trend line that's our third component here I'm looking for a failure up top right away from that trend line or oftentimes easier get below it and then use it as resistance going back down so you can see all three of these components are going to help me put together a strategy here for tomorrow. I want to sell up around these highs. The bear, the bear trend channel, right, gives me an area of interest for it. The range tells me that I need to look for failures, right, buyer failure back down. And, of course, this trend line tells me not to get roped into selling into the trend line, right, and look to get below it and back down in so it'll probably look something like this one try two try failure up and then back down we go again trying not to sell into that trend line but trying to use it on the opposite side right getting back down into that range and again if we can get back down to that range look for that two try rule one try two try and look for that move back up one try two try right move back up and again keep in mind there's a bear bias so if I had to choose which side I would definitely choose the sell side here at the highs last but not least how do we turn into a bull market what would it take here it would take three things first a strong move higher second a pullback to the moving average and this is where that trend line may come in handy because at this point the sellers are be weary about selling it if the buyers can get one more strong move Move higher now now we can connect the dots keep that trend line going use that as my high and then look for buying opportunities down off the low of that channel you know probably middle to late morning right tomorrow morning if these buyers can keep going through it so be careful being a buyer up here at the highs and also be careful being a seller up here at the highs because of that rising support trend line. This is an example of some of the choppiness we saw today. You can see it's a real choppy, kind of a sloppy chart there. It was inventory day, right? So it was expected to be extra sloppy, right? As, as we always joke around in our trade room. But we definitely, uh, we definitely can see a good plan here for crude oil traders in tomorrow's session. Now, on to our S&P. And the S&P and the NASDAQ look very similar right it's gonna be a little bit of a little bit of a of a, uh, a kind of a broken record here right they're very similar and really the key is a slope on this chart right now the S&P is bearish with a spike in channel pattern but look at all those wicks at the bottom of this chart look at all the big wicks down there and then look at how flat the moving average is 
right? And also, look at how flat the channel is. This clearly tells us the market is bearish, but it's a really weak, weak trend. Every time it goes down, the buyers buy it up, right? And the moving average is going flat. And you'll notice that channel, right? The channel, it's almost flat. The slope of that channel, the slope of this moving average, the whole slope of this market is almost flat. Now, what if it was flat? What if a channel was flat? What would you call a channel if it was, you would call it a range? Now, knowing that this channel looks almost like a range, now I know how to trade the range, right? I'm going to trade it just like a range. And anytime we see a trading range, we look for failures up at the highs, right? Failures down at the lows, right? For the buy off the low and sell off the high. So this is no doubt a bear market. There's no question about the overall bearishness of this market right now. That is, right, that's not to be to be uh, uh, discussed. The, the hard part, though, is every time we make that new low, bounces back up, make that new low, bounces back up, make that new low bounces that back up. What is that telling me? I can tell you right now, it's telling me not to sell near the lows. That's for sure, right? I may not be able to buy the lows, right? But I'll definitely be interested in taking profit at those lows. So whenever I see these big wicks at the bottom like this, right, you can definitely tell the sellers aren't getting anywhere at lower prices here. Automatically now that tells you look to sell at higher prices, higher prices, higher prices. Let's get this price up so we can sell it back down, right? They had the right idea back here. Look at that failure. Strong move up, buyers the moving average, failure back down again, right? Strong move up, buyers the moving average, failure back down again. Let's do the same thing we saw right around 2 o'clock Eastern time this afternoon, right? Same plan. And again, like I said earlier, right, when I have a channel that's like this, and you know, an easy way to do this is, is just take a, take a line and draw a line, a 45 degree angle, right, from the upper left to the lower right, or you can go the lower left to the upper right, whatever you want to do there, right, but that will give you a 45 degree angle, right, kind of half of a 90 degree angle. That 45 degree angle, that's what I want to use for my channel, right? Those 45 degree angles, those are the best types of channels. So when I see a situation where the channel looks like this, right, and the market is bearish, right, but you know, it's not a very strong channel, right? So this tells me stay away from those lows, right? There's nothing down there. Every time, every time we go to a new lower low, it gets kicked right back up again, right? Don't get suckered into selling low, right? And the most important thing is, is it's screaming at us. We've got to focus on selling up near the high. But here's what I want you to be thinking. When we get back up around that high, this market will have a lot of momentum to it, won't it? By the time we get back to the high of an almost flat, wide channel, think about this, right? This is going to be some big green candles, right? There'll be a lot of momentum going higher. So I'm not going to be able to sell it, right? It'd be very difficult to get that market to turn around and go right back down again. What usually happens is, is that when we see a really wide, almost flat channel, this is most important. It's traded just like a range in the sense of when we get back up to those highs, we're probably going to see the buyers try to run it higher, right? If those buyers are successful, they can reverse the trend, but most of the time they're not. Got to let them try again, and then we can look for that sell as it comes down on that second try. So the moral of the story is, is that when I see, when I see a really flat channel, right? Look, it is pretty much, pretty much flat, right? I mean, you can call this a range if you wanted to. It's almost the same thing. It needs to be traded like a range. And the reality is oftentimes when ranges rotate back to the high, they get such momentum, right? Like this one right here. Now, this is a kind of a perfect scenario, right? But a lot of times this will go up, pull back, run higher, and then start running out of steam and then collapse back down in. So you just got to be careful, right? I don't want to sell the first one. I want to try to sell that second one because, again, when you have that almost flat slope to your channel, the moving average is almost flat, 
you don't need an indicator to tell you this. You can see it. It's not even close to being a 45 degree angle. Trade it like a range, and that means look for failures up near that high. So that's my plan for tomorrow. Up near those highs, I'm expecting those buyers to try one more time. And once they try twice, right, I'm looking for that failure after that second time, right, to go lower. What if we do go lower? You know, what would what would happen if we did go lower here? You know, maybe I'm wrong or maybe something happens over the night, right? Maybe overnight someone comes out, right? Maybe some stupid politician or, right, or some crazy natural disaster or so whatever, right? Who cares, right? So maybe we go, maybe go lower here. What if we run lower? Then what do we do? What if you run lower? Don't sell low. Grab that low. Mark up that high, right? And grab that hidden channel. And we'll try to sell off that high here. Okay? One of the things you know about me is that I don't take the bait selling low. I don't chase after these markets, right? That means you got to get lucky to make money that way, right? Remember we talked about this last night? I don't want the fast, lucky money. I want the reliable money. The reliable money is the money coming off of that high. All right, guys, sometimes sometimes you get lucky selling low. I want to get reliable over the long term. So if we do end up running lower here, be careful because it's going to be almost impossible to predict how far this move lower will go. That's the tough part, right? And we want to make sure we stay away right from that low. We do have a key level support waiting down here on the S&P at 27.35 half. So keep it in mind for tomorrow if we do get that move right going lower. But at the same time right now, we're seeing a lot of range-bound markets here. So we'll expect to see more of that in tomorrow's session. How do we reverse? How do we, how do we turn bullish? Strength, pull back, strength. Yeah, strength, pull back to the moving average. I have no problem being a bull here. I don't care what direction I trade in. Neither should you. If we do get that strong, pull up. We'll look for that new channel, right? And we'll look to buy the low of that channel, that target, going back up to retest that high. So a relatively simple plan there for the S&P. NASDAQ is, is almost identical to the S&P right now. NASDAQ also bearish this morning or this evening with a spike in channel pattern. But looking at the slope of this channel, you can see it's very flat. That tells us to trade it just like a range tomorrow morning. Knowing this, I want to be a seller up near the highs. And because this is similar to a range, my, my, my real plan is to use the two-try rule for buyer failures up at resistance levels overhead tomorrow morning. So as you can see, right, we're running lower here, right, running lower. There's no doubt about the direction of this market right now. We're seeing these two lower lows, right, those two lows pinned to the highs. And you can see everybody was waiting up there, right, to sell into that high. This is a great example of kind of a hidden channel, right, or a spike in channel. Once you know this information, you can take that information, right, copy and paste it up top, shave off those wicks. Remember, whenever you're drawing a channel, one side of the channel will use wicks and one side of the channel will typically use the bodies. Okay, so you'll notice I'm going wick to wick here and then I'll shave off the wick and use the body up top. It's one of those tricks we talk about all the time on our right on our nightly newsletter that will help you with your technical analysis skills. And remember, we're going to cover all this in the intermediate course too, right? All of these little tiny tricks that I've learned over the last 10 years of studying charts consistently every day. You'd be amazed how how much practice does make perfect. So we're definitely bearish, right? It's flat. We want to sell off the high. We may have to wait, though, here in the NASDAQ, uh, to be very honest with you, when off that high, down to the low, back to the high, we should be trying to go lower here, right, down to that low. So as we're going lower, we, what you want to be thinking as we go lower is, is traps, right? Traps, 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 traps. You don't want to be selling into that low. So as we go lower here to finish off that move to the downside, we can look for those trap patterns, right, up above prior swings, up above the moving average, right, to finish off that move back down. But if and when we get back down to that low, though, once we get back down to that low, though, then we got to worry about, right, that move going back higher again. And remember, it's going to look really convincing, right? Look back here, right? Nice, strong run higher. Look at how convincing that move higher was. You'll notice, though, it didn't last very long, collapsed right back down again. Right. So remember, like I said earlier, when we have a really wide, almost almost range bound market now, it's going to want to run up. Right. As it as it as it runs up here, it's going to look really, really convincing. Right. So wait for it to get up. 
wait for it to pull back, try to go again, and then once you see that second try start failing, we start dumping it off that high, right, getting back down, right, to retest that low. So if we end up going lower, hopefully we do in the short term, right, you got those traps, right, traps before we get down to that low, right, and then up, failure up around that high. Now, again, what would, what would a reversal look like? A reversal would look like strength, pullback, strength, right? All the buyers have to do is hold these pullbacks, right? They get a strong move up, hold the pullback and go, take it, right? It's it's there for you, but you can see the buyers aren't doing anything with it. You know, it doesn't, don't, don't get upset about it. Don't be frustrated with it. Just be aware that, you know, these strong moves up, buyers are going to hold the pullback and go until that happens, Right. And once it does happen, then we can be a buyer on the way higher. But until that happens, right, don't force it. Don't try to predict that move higher. It looks like that 7000 big round number right with that measured move. It looks like that is still on our radar here for tomorrow. And remember, if we do end up going through that low, don't sell off the low. Find that new channel. Right. And sell off of that high. Right. So be aware. Be aware of that potential for tomorrow as well. Again, sell at resistance. Don't sell at support. Right. Sell at resistance. Don't sell at support. Pretty simple there. OK, so Nasdaq's pretty easy. Right. Stay away from that middle. Buy low, sell high. All right. How about some gold here now? Gold and euro, they don't look too great. I'll be very honest with you. And that's why I said earlier, this might be a bit of a taste of what we're getting here for the rest of the week. So just be careful here on gold and euro for the rest of the week if it continues the way it finished up today's session. Gold obviously is trading sideways with triangle pattern as the buyers appear to be struggling to retest the high. But the sellers haven't given us any clear control to the downside. The range is the most important in my opinion. We got that higher low, that lower high, the moving average is flat. That tells me we have a range. And with a range, we know we want to focus on breakout failures up above and below the range using that two try rule here for tomorrow. This market looks pretty much balanced here right now. I mean, you can definitely see there's a, there's a slight bull bias to it. But, you know, with that, though, we also saw a strong move down, right, and a leg lower here for the bears. So, you know, in all reality, I'm sure a lot of people see this as a bear market right now. I just don't think the bears really have it. You know, if the bears really had it, this move would have been dramatic, right? If the bears really took this, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have stalled out there. We would have probably trapped high there and run lower. So I don't think the bears have as much of control as we would like them to have if we're going to call this a trending environment. So as of right now, I think the buyers have some good edge. The sellers have a little bit of edge. It's, I'm going to call it even. I'm going to call it even right now. It's, I almost said, I almost said, you know what? We have no idea where it wants to go. Just fade the breakouts. That's pretty much what it looks like right now. I get this trend line coming up off the high, trend line coming down off the low, or, or, or coming off the low, trend line coming down off the highs. It's a range. It's a range. There's no clear, def there's no clear definition of, of who has control. It's a range. And so I want to stay away from the middle, right? Stay away from that middle. And then remember to use the two try rule. One try, two try, back down in. One try, two try, back up in. And remember, when it comes to a two try rule, the ideal two try is to get a higher high to the highs, right? Or a lower low to the lows, right? That's always going to be a key clue, right? For that two try rule, right? So don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it if it makes a new lower low or makes a new higher high. That doesn't mean it successfully broke it out. What successful, what, what successful breakouts look like is a first leg lower, the moving average comes over, the second leg pulls back to the moving average, and then explodes going lower. Okay, if you see that market explode lower, this is not the two try rule. The second try was successful at breaking out of that range. And as always, I'm going to connect those lows, bring up to those highs, right, and then go looking for that sell, looking for that sell, right, back down again. Same thing here, right? Same to the upside, right? If we see the market jump up, right? Break higher. No big deal there. We'll start looking for this as a, as a bull trend. We'll look for that buy, right? On strength and look for that move up to that measured move target here for tomorrow. 
honestly though honestly if we don't see some improvement here right on on this on this gold market for tomorrow we may be stuck in this range here right until the end of the week so be careful don't try to force those breakouts be be patient at the highs and the lows to wait for that turn because from what we saw today for example it looked really convincing as it went lower but it gets sucked back up into that range so just be careful chasing those moves right stay focused on the failures right focus on breakout failures going back into that range and of course right right stay away from that middle so gold's pretty easy you know, i'm not sure easy is the right word for gold but it's not that difficult just gonna stay patient and then the euro is it looks almost the same as gold right the euro looks very similar here to gold um we're bullish you could definitely see there's a little bit of that edge of the bull side right now but you'll notice the buyers now right have tried twice to retest the high uh and they're failing and the problem is is the sellers haven't taken control yet there's no easy way to call this a bear market yet it's a little bit less than we need to call this a bear market so right now i think the most important thing here is is that we have that strong move up anytime we see a strong move in one direction we look for that two-legged pullback and a retest of the high right they're going to try twice to retest that high they tried once they get stuffed they try again they get stuffed now at this point the bears need to show us they want to run right they got to show us they want to run we got the fish on the hook now it's going to show us right it's going to run that's going to be the big ticket for the sellers tomorrow so we got to see some follow-through going lower but you'll notice though it looks like this trend line is a little bit too sturdy here right for those bears to break through so trend line coming down overhead trend line coming up from below i don't have enough to give it to the bears yet I'm weary of being a buyer here because of the two try to retest the high. So like I said on gold, flip a coin. I, th I, think, I, I, think, I think we're pretty balanced at this point. There's definitely a little bit of an edge to the buy side here. But again, that edge is definitely losing its grip every second right now. So what's my plan here? It's a range. Moving average appears to be flattening out here. One try, two try, back up in one try two try back down in i gotta say my gut tells me we're bearish but my gut isn't a trading strategy right and neither is yours unless you well and you know there are probably people out there with 30 40 years experience watching charts and i'll bet they've got a pretty good gut instinct out there i've only been at this for over a decade now so i got a lot of work to do on my end to keep keep honing my gut instincts so in the meantime i'm gonna let the market tell me what it wants to do next and i would definitely encourage you to do the same thing as well so flat moving average trading range one try two try failure back down in one try two try failure back up in stay away from the middle of this range right because that's where everything's gonna get chopped up let's see here the downside really is the easy side here because if we can get a nice strong move down right that holds that move then we can connect these lows up to that high and we can start looking for those cells going back down again the sell side would really be the easier side tomorrow we don't quite have it yet we've got to get that move lower first the reason I say this is is because the buy side is probably gonna go right back to that high and then it's a big question mark right you know what do we do from there do we pull back right and and buy there that would pretty much be the best option for the buyers they can get back to retest that high or do we see it strength pull back strength and really run and then we're looking for a breakout pullback above that high right so there's a lot of different variations here but the problem is it's not going to be that easy if we go back to that high because going back to the high we're right at the top of that range we got a lot more op oh sorry, sorry uh, wrong button there we got a lot more open space to the downside right than we do to the upside right a lot more profit potential here right if we can get this market right going to the downside if we do see it back to the upside here then obviously we got these highs right and those would be some good targets for us but we'll have to see this thing strength pullback strength grab it off the pullback and hopefully get in up there before we get up to that high it's not going to be easy we'll have to wait and see if we get that strong move higher here first until then fade those breakouts avoid that middle and remember use that to try rule now wrapping things up here for tonight's newsletter i always appreciate you guys being with me every evening hope you guys are enjoying the video newsletter this week 
Don't forget, tomorrow morning, we'll be in our trade room at 8 o'clock Eastern time. I look forward to trading the strategy with you tomorrow. And if you're not a member, grab that free pass as part of our free trial. I would love to have you in our trade room tomorrow as a guest. Grab that free trial. Come out and join me as a guest in the trade room. Learn more about the strategy we use every day in our trade room on that free trial. I'll put all the links in the description of the YouTube video. And then don't forget, we got beginner, intermediate, advanced classes. And I'm always here to help out. If you have any questions along the way, hit me up on live support or post those comments in the comment section below the YouTube video. Guys and gals, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. If I don't see you guys tomorrow morning, have a great Thursday session wherever you're trading from around this planet of ours. I'll see you guys same time, same place tomorrow evening on tomorrow night's Nightly Newsletter. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.